And all these fucking typos. Let's see. Okay. Okay, looks like we're good to go. <clears throat> I could have sworn this used to save your... I don't even know what the point is if it doesn't keep the bookmarks. So. Alright, my bad. Let's do it. Okay, much love, many blessings. Um, we'll be picking up at the third part now. Yes, we're moving on to Earth signs. So I feel that this is a very, um, this is actually a really synchronized day because, um, you know, we're on Wednesday, hump day. We're made halfway through the week. So it's a really good day for clear communication and just receiving intuitive messages um, that are free of the unbiased of our emotional lens, which is really important during this time because um, Pisces tends to kind of exaggerate things. And there's good exaggeration and bad exaggeration, but sometimes when we're trying to get to source or get to just what it is for what it is, um, we need to know the facts, um, you know, kind of like that justice our kind of energy. Um, and sometimes emotions get in the way. They kind of play nepotism or favorites or, you know, don't always um, deal out the punishments or the rewards the way they should be given out um, just due to personal biases or external biases. So... You know, we're moving on to Earth signs, so that means we're going to be covering uh, Tauruses, Virgos, and Capricorns um, during the season. And there's a lot of really phenomenal shifts taking place uh, for each of you just as a whole and within the collective. Um, but before I really get started, because I'm really eager to really get cracking into kind of Taurus, because there's been a lot that's been seeming to kind of be revealed. Um, but I definitely want to drop the overall earth sign messages because honestly you guys uh especially my virgos have been kind of waiting for just the seeds of uh just sh what i want to say you've been waiting to hear the answer to something going on within your space that nobody else has really been able to give you for um quite some time it's really either it hasn't been the answer that you've been looking for or um this been being said but it, it's not been favorable to you you don't like the news so the the Pisces season has been uh, doing a lot. This is a very interesting season for you, Virgo. I don't know why I'm really kind of starting talking about you first, but it's like comfortable illusions can uh, be really easy to reinforce uh, during this time and with that Neptune energy. Um, as far as Tauruses, Tauruses really have an opportunity to kind of like decide what they want to do with the guardrails in their life as far as their image body, not their physical body, but their image body. And this is really just how they're seeing their honors and, rep and reputations within the world and how they're feeling about what how they've created the uh their home space not uh, as far as necessarily creating pivot or expanding but just literally how they feel about their home space and home space as it relates to both your physical home as well as within your your uh, your body um as capricorns it, it's kind of more of the same thing because you're still kind of coming off of the energy of the aquarius season and there was a lot of uh, things that were being that you were detaching from or realizing that you could just do better for a lack of a better word. It's kind of like things have been kind of sitting in a box and it's kind of like, you know, I can really get back to that. But when you see those things, it's kind of like seeing the collected dust brings up the nostalgia rather than encouraging to do something now in this present moment and a lot of the power is in the present moment so thinking about the past and thinking about how the past is steering your future and you know maybe not like the direction that it is moving towards can make you feel um it can kind of be like a defeatism or or kind of like a de depressing numb state um and depression isn't always sadness it's really that numbness we feel that makes us kind of do work or just do something because we have to rather than feeling like it is um actually fulfilling um within our heart for us so let me pull this earth sign method it's definitely feeling um those needs to kind of just get going um just for my earth sign um yeah we're gonna kind of keep saying that message a lot so i'm gonna actually uh <laughs> this is not your practice life this side actually yeah, i'm gonna leave that as the overall message for earth signs i think there's been a lot of 
indecisiveness um, and within the collective uh, normally I, I allow spirit to, to pull different messages so that different elements can have different ones but I do see that as I was about to put this away there was actually a, a tale and confirmation within spirit that actually this is just as much for you as it is for the other elements that have been receiving this as well so this is not your practice life decide what is your inner voice telling you about the dreams in your heart so most four of my earth signs across the board all earth signs um, you've been feeling these movements, these pulls, and you've been, it's been making you reflect Pisces of the energy that can be very, um, stimulating as far as our imaginations, um, the things in our headspace. Um, our heart is triggered as it relates to things that create imagination and fantasy for us. So obviously during the Pisces season, there's going to be a lot of stimulation of the sacral chakra and the heart chakra, but it's the sacral chakra because imagination generally resides and creative force um, and, and sexual creative force resides in the sacral chakra. So Pisces season brings out a lot of sexuality. So I guess it's not also surprising that Pisces is also the sign of unconditional love. So sometimes they're usually the ones that are, have an uh, easier time being um, the, the word free spirited. And I know it has bad connotations, but that's the, that aspect of that unconditional love. And from the zodiac placement, as far as it relates to the collective, unconditional love comes from Pisces. It comes from the Pisces placement. So where we have Pisces placements in our chart is usually where we're more able to be relatable or empathic to people um, as it relates to unconditional love and connecting with others outside of ourselves. Um, with that mouthful, this is kind of the kind of the what we're working with. Like I said, it's not your practice life. So as this resonates with you across the board, um, it's really important for you to decide how are you kind of being in your head about the things you want to do versus feeling like you're actually getting the things that you want within your space. So with that, I want to move to uh, Taurus so we can actually get started with that. Taurus is actually, um, oof, I mean, I'd rather. Taurus is actually the uh, second house in the Zodiac. So we're talking about an earth sign that likes to get things going. They're the Zodiac bankers of the Zodiac, um, of all the signs in the Zodiac. So they, they transmute energy, they transmute energy into abundance finances both physical and emotional but the point is they take energy and convert it into what they want to do so for tauruses uh what that means is because they're the sign of life uh, uh, the opposite of um um the opposite of a uh, scorpio with the sign of death virgo i um, uh, taurus likes to show things where scorpio conceals things that's why it's a secret so taurus is shows you what it wants you to see because it's the sign of life life is light light is sun so Taurus reveals. So sometimes when Taurus has things in the forefront, you may think that this is what it is, but that's just what they're putting forward. A lot of times, Taurus is on when their vibration is not necessarily in alignment, can be kind of a walking red herring or a walking smoke screen, and you're just led to believe that what you see before you is what it is, and in actuality, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. So um, during this time for you, uh, Taurus, uh, second house uh, vibes as far as values. Um, values, earth values as far as making decisions and how the things, the money and the energy and the resources, you're applying them towards the things that give you that call to life, um, that make you feel content. You are a dreamer sign. And as far as the signs of the zodiac, when you're content, you really can be kind of whimsical within your space, almost like romanticizing and fantasizing. So this Pisces season is romanticizing up some of the things that you would like, as well as how you are taking the things that are already presented to you. Um, that may also be a tale for you that you just need to make sure that you're not being uh, duped or gullible about an experience just simply because it's what you want within a situation. So we're going to get definitely with Pisces season. Um, Pisces, as a water sign, I think it is important to aid other non-water signs with understanding the <laughs> the, the the waters of, of that we're traveling or transversing when we step into them, because we don't know if they're shallow or deep or just expansive. And when we really deal with Pisces, we really deal with very very expansive, almost infinite waters. So we find ourselves in this space where we're exploring things that we kind of kind of constricted, kind of brought in suppressed and Pisces is kind of said you know what let that bitch all out let it just all kind of hang out and let it all hang out as it relates to everything that I have on my mind within my awareness about the things that I desire and the things that I fear and that's not necessarily the most comfortable space when you want certainties a lot of earth signs want certainties within their reality and within their physical 
I would say that of all the earth signs, the Taurus can kind of be the most emotional of the earth signs. Um, and that probably comes from the fact that you don't always express how you are actually feeling on the inside. You may show up, but you will kind of be like this elephant in the room and you still don't really divulge what's really eating at you. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how uh, you're supposed to get help with the situation and the people that you find yourself around trying to address the situations that you're in if you're not actually meeting halfway. Showing up isn't meeting halfway. You have to do more. So as it relates to the illusions, we have the daughter of baskets. So in the illusions, you may feel that, that what this is is very sentimental to you and is very precious and it needs to be protected. Um, but in reality, the daughter of Bass is really showing that there's a lot of femininity emotionally within the situation at hand that you are trying to put your energy into and you need to take responsibility for it. In the reality of things, Father of Coins, um, there's an inversion. You simply just aren't doing enough. There, literally, you have the funds or the means to apply what it would require. You're supposed to be in the role or the space that you're in, but you're taking it Advantage. You're not being a good fatherhead or a figurehead. You're not being a good role model. You think that everybody's looking up to you. That's the illusion, daughter of coins. But you're actually not being a good role model. You may have the means in a way, but you're not actually providing it. Or and if you do, it's being provided in a way from a space of judgment or an I owe you one. And these people and these things that you have around you is not a platonic relationship. You are the sign of values and the things and energies that you're putting into require you to put in with a space of passion and life. Why are you doing this shit if it's not out of love? So you're feeling a little burnt out or the, you're feeling burnt out with the stresses of the situation and it's creating a lot of frustration. But some of the frustration is stubbornness, which is why we see the, uh, the father of coins because there's a rigidarity here. You feel that because you created this space, you created all the things that are here that you don't have to answer for anything and that they just have to accept what is and it's that. And maybe that is the rules of the household, but the energy in the household is not harmonizing and you're not happy. So somebody needs to adjust the rules. Rules are rules, right? But nobody's happy. So maybe rules aren't rules or maybe these rules are outdated. And with Pisces sun coming into confirmation in the season where you like to well, I want to say tend to be kind of rigid or just kind of go with the status quo. You're very traditional. So you don't like to try new things. And 12th house vibes is kind of a more of a, a wild nature, kind of unconditional love doing things simply because you want to. And that energy may be making you look around at people and see like, where's your, your sense of discipline? Where's your sense of just kind of being conformed, you know, and being just meeting the status quo and the guidelines. But maybe it's you that's actually been too strict maybe it's time to loosen up some and allow in something different like some imagination to do something different it's getting a little boring within your space it's getting a little predictable so it's time for something new i hope that this is resonating with you taurus uh, i feel that that is very straight to the point and concise and if you know anyone who is a taurus that needs to hear this message definitely share like and comment um within this time during this pisces season it can be very challenging to take those pauses especially when we're being met with a lot of different energies and um, sensations, some that are ambiguous to the point of, uh, of gray area, that sometimes we don't always know what to do. Um, and it's really important during those times to be honest or take that pause, because when we're rushing, everything emotionally seems like a good decision. So really to ask yourself and take that divine pause and ask, am I pausing, am I moving at my own rhythm? Have I allowed for empathy in this situation or am I just sticking to what I know is what it is and this is let's not reinvent anything let's just keep going with what works because it works for me it's not working for anyone else so it's time for you to know that and to create that space okay on to Virgos okay so a Virgo is my um, virgin mother of the zodiac um, very, very pure. Um, it's a very pure sign in the zodiac. Um, there's a purity that comes with them. Um, there's a mother. They're the mother nurturers. So that's why they deal with issues of detachment because the mother doesn't really symbolically have a choice to detach. Once you birth, you are a mother, and you automatically end up giving out your nurturing. And I think that, that that's very fitting in a world um, where when we're trying to establish our own personal boundaries. 
Um, we have to decide when to nurture others and when to nurture ourselves. And we have to do that in a healthy way and create those boundaries so that we don't burn ourselves out. You know, it's like if the captain goes down and nobody's leading this bitch. So um, we have to make sure that, but when we become, well, we become mothers, or when, when people step into the mother role, it's not really a choice. It's kind of like once you're that mother, you're always that mother. So it's kind of like almost like this personal boundary goes out the window. And sometimes uh, for women in that gender role, it's like with society that kind of conditions you or just builds you up to accept that as like the main walk of life. You're also subconsciously or unconsciously playing up the fact that your choice to nurture or to give out your energy to others without first checking with yourself also goes off the table. I do find that for a lot of people who are uh, literal mothers, not just symbolic nurturers or uh, people who take care of other codependents, that finding that way to still give to yourself when you are obligated to is, is a very powerful thing because we need a space where we can heal. I bring all that up to say that as we deal with Virgos and, the, and them being the divine nurturer, there is a trait within your, your, your makeup that you have issues with detachment. Um, you don't necessarily like to connect with things, but when you do and you actually like something, it's hard for you to let it go. So you carry a lot of toxic things with you. They may not be good for you because you simply want to heal them and make them better. And this, there comes a point where you have to admit to yourself when to stop fixing things, when to stop allowing something to be around you because it makes, it complements you in a way. It's kind of like having, you know, a bunch of ugly friends around and you're the cute one. It's kind of like, okay, are you really that cute or are we just getting the cheerleader effect? And I feel like in a sense that you've been kind of applying the cheerleader effect uh, in your metaphysical energy field. And rather than clean up and be seen by yourself, you have these other people who don't necessarily look the best, but they kind of make you look great with flying colors by comparison. And it's not to say that you're actually doing that intentionally, but I think somewhere within your energy, it, there's a, com a comfortability to not have to look at yourself and also as a, as a, as a Virgo to have something to criticize or to critique or to work on to take away from the the, the responsibility um, of having to do those things with yourself. Um, and as you always have time to kind of look and critique other people, you if you were by yourself, you would only have you in the mirror to look at and you're not ready, necessarily ready to do that yet. And there's a lot of emotions. You don't necessarily like dealing with a lot of emotions either. That mutable mind of yours kind of makes you run wild and you like to deal with things that are a little more surface level and fact based. So dealing with a lot of emotions is not your comfortable space either you if anything it creates more irritation than necessarily wanting to dive and empower yourself by facing those emotional traumas <laughs> oneness is the way oneness is the way it's time for you to follow your soul truth how can you show more compassion and acceptance towards those you don't understand you haven't been making a way you haven't been allowing yourself to open up to different perspectives there's no point in arguing with anybody if you are not able to see things from somebody else's point of view your view is not the only view in the world there are eight billion fucking people in the world you are not the law this is not your world you have to learn to play nice with others if you didn't learn these qualities when you were a kid then you take these same qualities into your adulthood and then you have difficulty compromising and when people don't agree with you you just think that it's okay to cut them off or be rude or just do it on your own and you have to learn to share and not just share when it's convenient for you or when you're getting something beneficial you're as a virgo um you have an easy time giving you do any and everything for people that you care about but if you don't like somebody even if it's the simplest thing it could be like okay i just need like a, a teaspoon of sugar and it's like no fuck them and it's like damn you got it right there in your hand and it's like when you don't like somebody even if it's not justified you are able to justify all of the things that you do and don't do towards those people and that's something that needs to be worked on that's something to be mindful of because during a space in the pisces sun season when emotions flare and are exaggerated more from when they actually are then you don't want to be taking actions out of emotion from a space that justifies what it is that you're currently doing. How can you show more compassion and acceptance towards those you don't understand? There is a call in the spirit for you to take a, a pause and actually look at how you're treating the people around you. Um, there's also confirmation that you're aware of how you're, you've been acting towards people or um, kind of creating the same cycles just because it's really convenient for you. Um, dealing with things that are known for you because you're the sixth house, sixth house is routines, healing, taking care of yourself, things like that. 
So routine also denotes pattern. And on one end, it also can be karma or doing something that you've already done before. Um, and it's easy for you to do rinse, recycle, repeat. You know, you're good at math, you're good at facts, you're good at data. Those things are always the same. Science is always the same within reason. So when you're presented with things that are kind of magical or just emotional or subconscious or divine feminine, then you're kind of like, oh, what the fuck is that? What am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> you know, so you push it to the side and think that it's irrelevant or useless or superfluous data. So what's the illusion? Two of sticks. You're getting, you feel that you're getting the same whether you do or don't um, deal with the situation, but you are, there's, an, uh, there's a lack of appreciation because you simply aren't applying the energy. So you're seeing your situation from the perspective of assuming that it would be the same regardless of whether you do or don't. Because this really plays on that Virgo feeling like if you do it, if you don't follow me, it's wrong. And if you follow me, it's right. It's kind of like everybody that listens to me is right and everybody who doesn't is doing the wrong thing. And that ideology, two of sticks, that ideology is not fair. That ideology creates narcissism. It also doesn't allow for other people to have co-creation. It really cuts out co-creation. So that's the illusion. We have two of sticks and there's a lot of emotion and feeling. But really the reality, ten of sticks. The reality. Uh, once again, then we have another sign where we could be doing more. We could be letting go of a situation. We're holding on too strongly to a matter. And it's really not that important. What you, it, It's not important from the standpoint that if the people that you're holding this energy towards died today, you wouldn't care about any of this shit that you're fucking holding right now. You have to let this shit go. You have to start giving love and compassion to those that deserve it. Our biggest issue as a collective is that we always care when it's too late. Like how many instances do we have to have where we keep being shown like, oh, I appreciate this. Oh, appreciate this. Like when... Are you going to appreciate these things that you have around don't have to be this way? You don't have to be entitled. You are not entitled to feel the way you feel about the situations. You can open the fuck up. And at the end of the day, oneness is the way. So this means that we're writing a truth. We're writing one thing. And we're not even allowing for the possibility or the consideration that other things could be. But sometimes when we are tying up our hands and feet, then putting our hands and feet into a matter. We don't have an extra two set of hands and feet to apply to another situation. So you've been so committed in your energy across the board. This is full body that you can't see another possibility. So you think that this is the only way you think this is the only outcome. You think this is the only feeling because you're simply not willing to even consider another possibility. Um, I, I really hope for you, uh, Virgo, especially as we're dealing with the, the Pisces energy, that there's a very, 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 very strong call for you to loosen the fuck up in your energy. You're, you're really justifying a lot of hangups and bringing up a lot of old matters that you haven't let go about the situation. You're carrying a lot of baggage and luggage. Um, that's why you're not able to flow through this Pisces season and the currents, your pipes are blocked up. The currents are really kind of stagnant. And even if there is movement, it's either slow or you're just not enjoying um, the stale air and the waters around you as things go and take you to the destinations that you want to get to. I hope that this message is resonating for you, Virgo, because you I really feel in a sense that you are sitting in a kind of a, a slump state. But the people around you won't notice, which is why we see the two of sticks, because the face that you're putting on and the work that you're doing is keeping you busy. So there's really not any time to talk about it. And if anyone does actually try to even touch on the matter, it really just gets glazed over because you already have your hands in other things. So you're not really trying to hear it. Um, you have the opportunity. Just It's really a call for you to stop being so hard on yourself and to be honest, not be aloof about what you need to address that same energy that you use to critique and criticize other people and situations external to you if you could really like turn that mirror around and apply it to yourself in a in an unbiased way and be just as hard on yourself in a real way you would see some phenomenal empowerment um it's really important for you to not beat yourself about it because taking a look at yourself isn't about feeling guilty about the things that you're not doing but it's being real with yourself about what it is that you know you personally know that you're doing and not doing and acting and actively making the changes about it because you're not happy with the life and the situations and the connections the state of the connections within your space so honestly ask yourself you're not doing this 
because you're sitting in front of somebody and you want you don't want to say yes or no because they might hear how that sounds or look how it sounds this is about you and being in the mirror with you and god and how do you feel if you're not happy when you bring this shit up to yourself then change it if you are and keep doing more to protect that and value that and cultivate it all right virgo uh, moving on to capricorn hope this message resonated with you much love many blessings and ashe okay capricorn placements we're dealing with capricorn so we're dealing with cardinal we're dealing with that initiator earth sign so that means that there's they're getting things started and going don't know if they're necessarily finishing them depending on how long the destination is away but they are starting a lot of shit um so there's always something cooking you know we're thinking on that devil devil major arcana energy so what are we doing with the the use of the energy and the things that come into your awareness and your energy field 10th house vibes so we're dealing with career and fortune and fame and how we're seeing ourselves so for you capricorn the collective field is impacting you unseen forces in action <laughs> so we're really not giving you a lot in this sense and then we're going to elaborate on that more that's probably not the one thing that you really want to be hearing during this time because you do like things to be more concrete and because you are an overthinker um when you're trying to come to terms about complex things um hearing about things that you don't necessarily have the most um concrete control over doesn't give you the, the greatest uh energy but i do think that this is an awareness call for you to actually take account of things outside of your physical because there's been a lot of focus on your physical reality such as your finances and your home space your, you know your relationship lives and things of that nature things you're trying to grow up, particularly sometimes even with your family i'm um, just trying to repair relationships and just make sure that you're doing the things that you feel make you feel like not so much in your calling per se because calling is a strong word but just make you feel like you're in your purpose or just moving towards something that is fulfilling so if there's stagnation during this time you're really kind of looking and you're like okay what, what what is this going on right now am i feeling something from somebody is this about to jump off and pop off into this opportunity and it's kind of like all those things so you're kind of sitting trying to play the field to see what what could really happen for you how can you relinquish control of a situation that feels blocked? Exactly. So when we feel stuck, it starts to make us ask, like, okay, is somebody sending energy at me? Am I getting psychic attacked? Do you have, do you have roots on me? Does somebody not fuck with me at work? Like, why am I kind of in this fucking cell in the middle of water and there's no wind blowing and everything is just fucking up? So these things are also kind of a a play on what you're not normally used to because they're used to kind of playing around in the sandbox. And taking those skills and know-how and applying the same know-how, you've basically been thrown into a very, very vast desert. And you're like, where the fuck, where is east, north, south, east, and west? And every time I try to do something, it just feels like I'm getting, I go here, it's kind of the same shit. I go right, I go left, it's the same shit. So it's like, is I'm seeing mirages. It's like, why is nothing I'm doing actually creating anything? So there has to be some type of illusion. There has to be something going on that's kind of keeping me in this metaphysical mirage. Um in the situation uh, one of the biggest things i feel is um you have to do a self-check about patience um there's a, a call from spirit uh, yeah there's a uh there's a call from spirit about being patient uh, something that you've seeded or been putting into place you're expecting the results to be somewhere where they haven't actually said that they nothing has said that they should actually be where it is at this time but you're holding a space that it should be this when in actuality nothing is actually said that it should be at this point yet in a lot of ways you may have actually just gotten started with something that may have already been in place but you've only really just gotten started tending to it so it's creating this weird well damn this has been around all this time it's like okay but it's been kind of just growing off of rainwater and you know it's got weeds and shit all around it you never actually clipped any of shit you know you never put fertilizer down you never actually given it that good water or anything so yeah it's growing but what care have you tended to have you been talking to this this plant have you been putting any energy in other than the bare minimum and even if that not probably just letting the universe kind of carry it just off of just the science of it existing have you really put any energy into it to make it what it is? Man, I, I, I don't even remember pulling this, um, but yeah, I ate a basket. So on one end in the illusions, it, it really feels like that energy is there, but I'm feeling a kind of an unreciprocated energy. I feel a heavy burdened energy, which is why eight, eight is always a heavy, 
um, burden of energy. It's a very forceful um, energy, and eight is also the the small infinity, or it's the first infinity. So um, there is, in a sense, that we're kind of going back through a loop, and we're coming in on ourselves. So you may be putting an energy into someone or something, but it's not being given back. But you think that it is, and we're, that's why we're in the position of illusions. You have subjected yourself to an energy and what you're actually receiving back. It makes sense why you feel like the collective field is impacting you with unseen forces in action. Um, this is a call for you to actually be mindful of not being a martyr. Um, you may feel like your efforts don't mean anything, but in actuality, they do. Um, but it's just a call that because you're not seeing any tangible results, you're like, why am I working here and I haven't got a check yet? So it's, it's kind of like those vibes. Uh, but the son of baskets in reality... There's more that you still need to do and learn. You've really only just gotten started. You really just only have the base level know-how and experience on the, in the situation. You, um, you're you going with what you know, which which is fine. Uh, but how you feel within your disposition, that's good when it gives you the work and the things that you want. But when there's still trauma triggers within your energy fields, such as dealing with things or how you deal with the nose or how you deal with um, when you're not able to get what you want, that's when your devil side really starts to come out, Capricorn. When you're not getting what you want, sometimes that self-destructive nature comes into play. Those vices come into play. Um, it can be a kind of that defeatism or just going into not necessarily checking the consequences of going after what you want. And that can happen because, like, when we have that devil energy, it's like sometimes when we're suppressed from the things that we feel that we're not able to make harmonious strides towards or just strides in a way that is conducive for what we feel is legit then we'll find a back end way to do it or we'll have it suppressed for so long that then when it comes out it either comes out in a way that's not controllable or we settle for something that is a lot less than what we actually ask for so we're son of baskets in reality we're believing that we've been putting in this energy but we have to check what quality of energy that we're coming to the table with some of our rejection or feeling like it's unreciprocated is because the quality of shit we got in our cup is is not worth it. It's kind of like, okay, well, you showed up with your cup, but did you change the water? Is this, you know, the person, the situation might be asking for alkalinity and you bring us some fucking tap water. But you just think that because you showed up with your cup and your basket and your offering that this is good enough. It, it's no knock against you. It's just everything's got prerequisites. And instead of feeling, don't take it personal about the situation, just know what the prerequisites are for you to match the situation. Unforeseen forces to, uh, taking action also is a, is a confirmation that there are things that you don't know acting on your behalf. Um, the son of baskets being here means that you shouldn't limit yourself. You shouldn't limit yourself in the face of something that may feel bigger than you because you don't have the experience or know-how because unforeseen forces are acting on your behalf meaning that if you simply are putting in a petition and prayers and doing the work in the physical then those areas where the gap is not being met those honors that are needed to get you the job that whatever to give you the accolades the this that and the third to, to provide that person to give you the nod will be made available but it's not going to be made available if you are riding on not putting the energy in. That eight of that eight of cups is really speaking to me because um, it's truly a self check to ask yourself what energy are you holding in place and are you in your headspace? It's like every time something good comes along that you truly, truly, truly want, you start to get all in your headspace, start to fantasize, start to do all this shit, and it's like. The thing you want is, is, is here in the moment. Why are you in your head? Why are you in your head about the thing that you have to do something in the physical about? So Pis Pisces does this to us sometimes, especially as earth signs when we're not necessarily used to just dealing with an overflow of emotions. So we all across the board, is it's okay. We got to do that self-check where it's like, am I being too sensitive? Have I been hit with something that I am not able to source? Sometimes we start to get upset and feel an emotion and we haven't even actually decided it, what it is that we're feeling we kind of just go with the surface of oh, i'm mad like well okay are you mad are you irritated or are you, are you embarrassed like what are you mad about are you mad because you don't want to admit that you were wrong or you know like we got to go deeper so we just really want to make sure that we are going deeper and i really hope that this message is resonating with you capricorn because um during this pisces season there are some phenomenal things that are happening or transpiring for you during this time um, you may not necessarily be seeing them uh, physically related, but you've been being set up with opportunities to receive everything that you want. 
And one of the things that's so important about Pisces season is to really do a self-check with how we're feeling because we magnetize to us what we feel. And Pisces is the manifesting generator. And as emotions amplify our manifesting power, dealing with the sign like Pisces where it's like, damn, I might be feeling depressed because something's not going my way. And it's like, but things are still in a mutable state. So if I start focusing or getting depressed about something that in this current moment is not going the way I want, now I'm drawing that energy of the thing that I'm focused on that still hasn't seemed to get to be that. So this is a really important subject to decide. Like, it's nothing wrong with feeling an emotion about a situation because our emotions tell us how we feel about a matter. But when we take those emotions and just allow those emotions to just be then we're not doing that investigative work and we're not taking that energy and as capricorn has a sign of the cardinal sign you're supposed to take all energy and transmute you're supposed to take your money and transmute you're supposed to take your energy and transmute it you're supposed to take the things physical and non-physical and transmute are you transmuting this energy i really want you to think on that and as we move through this pisces season and as we've been transversing through these elements and these moon signs Definitely bring your mindfulness to those present moments when you're called to, to ask yourself, are you, how are you transmuting your energy? Are you transmuting the energy and allowing for even unforeseen energy to aid you in a positive way rather than just assume the paranoias or the cynicisms or the pessimisms that can come from the things that haven't happened for you yet? I hope this is resonating for you, Capricorn. Definitely, if you know a Capricorn, uh, like and comment and share this video. Um... This has definitely been uh, very grounding, and I hope that you can take this throughout the week to um, just apply this to yourself and to really impact yourself in an empowering way. You really have the ability to uh, step into your sacred feminine and actually utilize it as a force to make yourself whole and to create and manifest the things that you want within your reality. Um, this has definitely been a blessed live. Those are my thoughts and channel message from Lotus. Um, I'll definitely be posting the highlights a little bit later. Much love, many blessings, and ashe.